Welcome back to another segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons. Today, I am very excited to have as my special guest, Michael O'Keefe, who played Chad Marshall in the episode, The Competition, and again in the episode, The Elopement. Please welcome Michael O'Keefe. Welcome to my Hi. YouTube channel. Uh, I know all the fans were very excited when I said that um, I was hoping to be able to connect with you for a conversation. So I'm sure they will all be eager to hear anything you care to share. <laughs> well, I'm happy to be here. You know, it was really a treat to get your your message in your email. And, um, you know, it takes me back, as I'm sure it does you. You had, I mean, how many years did you guys run? The series was nine seasons. Oh, my God. Uh, yes. And back then, of course, we did took nine months to finish a season you know so was it was something like 22 a year back then or 22 so? to 25 usually yeah Basically. you know it, it's it reminds me of the story of that reunion that was not too long ago it was about 11 years ago at the Wilshire Bell Theater in LA right and when I saw you there and you know it, it was I was so happy to get the invite to that because the year I did the Waltons was my first year in Hollywood. Oh, wow. Yeah. I was going to ask you how all that came about. I was 19. I had dropped out of college. I had done a play in New York. I had done a couple of TV commercials. I'd even done a pilot for a TV series with Richard Kiley and Shirley Knight that was based on friendly persuasion the old Gary Cooper movie with um, Eva um, uh, St. Marie and um, Tony Perkins played the role in the movie that I played in the pilot. And so, um, you know, it was an incredibly meaningful for meaningful thing for me personally to be cast on the walls. I couldn't believe it was happening because I was well aware of the show. Mm -hmm. and there I was, you know, at 19, knowing really nobody in LA um, except my agents, you know, who had offices in New York, which is how I met them. And so when I got that uh, invitation to the reunion 11 years ago, and I walked in the room, there was Mr. Hamner, who I don't think I had seen since 1974 or five. Well, they'd, you know, as you probably remember, they brought me back the next year in 75 to do Chad too. Chad <laughs> <Lewis>. <laughs> <laughs> you almost got to be a member of the family. <laughs> it was so close, Judy. It was oh, close. so close. See, you picked the wrong sister. <laughs> the prize was, was, was within my grasp. <laughs> Mary Ellen was old enough to be married, so say you. you... <laughs> I know. I had I only to do it over again. But um, and I walked in the room, and he immediately recognized me, said hello. And I was like, Mr. Hamner, I can't even believe you remember me. He was like, Michael O'Keefe, I remember you. You were so good on our show. And he just had this incredibly welcoming vibe, like the show, like the Waltons. And it, re it was really touching for me. That was a really special reunion for me. I don't go to a lot of those things. I don't know. It was it was so evocative for me. And it was such a, um, you know, it was like a recall thing for me about why I wanted to be an actor and what it was like to want to be an actor. And those moments you have when you're young and you're a teenager and you, you do it and you think, oh, I, I could probably do this or I might want to try to do this, you know, and it. It took me all the way back to all, all of those feelings. So to get your email, you know, once again, evokes all of that for me. So I'm, I'm really just happy to be here. Oh, well, thank you. I'm so glad to hear that it was such a, a good experience and a memorable one. I was amazed at the people that, that they were able to gather together for that 40th. And um, I was just talking with Eric Scott earlier today, who played Ben, and because it's my birthday, so he called to wish me a happy birthday. Oh, happy birthday. Thank you. See, I'm spending my birthday with you, nice. <laughs> which will always make it special for me. Um, but we were talking about um, just uh, the show and the way in which at what, how disappointed we were at that 40th that we didn't have more time to just hang out with everybody because I said oh you know Michael's going to be joining me and he's like oh that's so great and that there were so many people we hadn't seen in forever and we were we had to be here we had to be there we were you know our time was being guided and all we wanted to do was hang and 
visit with everybody that we hadn't seen. Yeah, you know? sure. yeah. And how you yeah. lose track of people. And, and it's always so exciting when I get an opportunity to reconnect because I didn't run around collecting everybody's contact info and I probably should have. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, we were, we were quite young back then, you know, I mean, it was that, that era, you know, where pre cell phones, you know, pre uh, all the, you know, we were still analog as they say back then in the seventies, you know? Yeah. I wish too, that I had been more organized about being in touch with people and, and maintaining relationships because it flies by so quickly. And really in the end, you know, you have the movies and the TV things that we've all done and, you know, had over the years, but really it's, it's about the connections with the people, I think in a way. Uh, that's why I, I'm so envious of you guys that you had nine years in the same environment. Now, I'm sure being inside of it for you, there were times where you were like, get me off of this mountain. You know, I've got to get off of this mountain. There must be something else for me in this world besides Walton's Mountain, you know. But, you know, being an actor who never has been a regular uh, TV show, except for a, a rare sort of two-year stint I did on Roseanne, in the 90s for their fifth and sixth season. Um, I, I always wanted that. I always wanted to have those connections. My, um, I have an 11 year old son now. Ah. And um, last night we started, or the night before we started rewatching all of the Harry Potter movies mm. and watching those kids grow up together uh, is so evocative and the movies are so magical. And in the way the Waltons has that place for so many people in the American culture, and specifically for me too, because not only, you know, did, did we get to work together on that, but, you know, I worked with Ralph afterwards. He played my father in a play in New York Wow. Uh, called The Kill Deer. And then I don't know if you know this or not, but this is probably my favorite Waltons anomaly, uh, if you will. Richard and I worked together again. 10 years after I did the Waltons and we did a play together and Richard played my father in, no. that, <laughs> in that play. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like Michael playing his mother, you know, on the Waltons. Right. <laughs> Just in enough real life uh, age between the two of you to do that. <laughs> Richard and I never lost our sense of humor about that. And now I haven't seen him in a while, but when we do bump into each other, I got bumped into him in the in the Broadway district in New York not too long ago, and he was across the street, and and I was walking, you know, like on I don't know 47th Street or something, and I hear this guy call from across the street, "My son, my son, what's happening? What's happening?" And I'm like, "It's oh, it's Richard. Oh, well, yeah, okay." You know, we did the Count of Monte Cristo. Oh, wow is the old chestnut that, you know, Eugene O'Neill's father had made famous, James O'Neill. Oh. That was his touring thing that made him wealthy. And Richard played the Count of Monte Cristo, the James O'Neill part. And because Peter Sellers, not the English actor, but the great American director, who's a very much an avant-gardist, cast it, he really didn't care that Richard and I were only about a year or two apart in age and he just liked the vibe mm. so, and it was uh patty lapone played my mom who of course yeah. you know in another world i would have been dating her because we're really she's <laughs> only one or two years older than me too <laughs> but it was one of those productions it was a great production actually roscoe lee brown was in it joaquin delmeda the, the great uh, um brazilian actor uh he was in it and david warlow this amazing english actor who was a fantastic Beckett interpreter in his day, um, spoke fluent French and did Beckett's original plays in French. And we wow. were all in this production together down at, in DC at the Kennedy Center. But of course, you know, the, the, every day I go down stage, I go, yeah, Richard Thomas is playing my dad. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll find a way, I'm gonna find a way to make, it make this work. But, you know, and I, I always felt so welcomed on the show and, and everybody was so, you know, because we, we were young, you know, I don't know how you were because you had a real job and you were just, you know, in the middle of an arc of doing all those years on the show. But 
you know, there was a part of me, you may be surprised to hear this, there was a part of me at 19 that was kind of bluffing uh, as an actor, you know, I was sort of not faking it, but I was kind of broadly presenting myself as probably a lot more capable than I actually was. But is and, that the beauty of it? Because you were so good and you were so like unselfconscious in a way that I really thought was terrific. And I, I looked back at the episodes more recently and you had a freedom about your work that probably came from not, not knowing too much to then getting your own head. So you just kind of did it. And I thought, oh, what, what great choices, what you were just brave in a way and, and, and big in a believable way, like, like a young man would be at that point in his life, in this adventure that he was going after. So I just, I loved your work and. Oh, geez, Judy, coming yeah. from you, that's, no, that's really gratifying to hear, you know, because you, you never really know um, what it is you're doing in a sense when you're on the inside of it. And even though I watched it once or twice afterwards, I'm not, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of my work. Although now that I have an 11 year old son, you know, every once in a while, because I am on camera from back in those days, you know, we were watching television here. We, my wife and, and son and I live in upstate New York in the country. We're in Ulster County about, you know, like 90 miles north of New York City. And, you know, I have six acres. It's kind of wide wow. open. You know, it's a big, big open sky kind of place. So occasionally, you know, we'll, we'll watch TV at night. And for some reason, we were scrolling through and there was my Waltons <laughs> um, from the first year. I mean, you know, the first season that I did and we, we did a screenshot and we captured me at that age. And, you know, and I go back and look at that picture now and I don't even know how I, where I got the courage to do what I did and like even buy a plane ticket and go to LA at that age, because, you know, now looking back, it, it's about 50 years ago. You know, it was 74 <laughs> my first year out there. Um, 76 and 77 were when yes, those aired now. originally. Because yeah. um, it was the, we started, because it was season three, four and five were your episodes. Yeah, that's I, right. I, because in yeah. 74, I moved into the city. 75, I dropped out of college. And I made my my trips out to LA that, that year, 75, 76. Yeah. So remember the first director, Harry was his name, right? Harry Harris? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Harry had been an AD, right? And he kind of got promoted up into directing or he had moved into directing after being an AD, if I remember. He had right. been an editor originally. An editor. Yeah. Exactly. And then started directing. So he had a very good sense of when he shot just shooting what he needed because he already knew in his mind how it would edit together. So yeah. he could just, you know, just clip and nothing phased him. I mean, we had all kinds of disasters and episodes. It was always animals. He had to deal with animals and kids all the time, which of course was the Waltons, animals and kids. And, you know, he had this sort of uh, grumpy sort of exterior that you knew was all fake, but there was, he just got it done. and and never panicked and it was yeah you know you just reminded me of something that happened during the filming because you guys had so much more experience than me i didn't know this and all of the kids and will gear and alan corby and ralph and michael <laughs> were all seated around a dinner table for a meal that i was eating and so we started rehearsing and i started like eating chicken and saying yeah you know and saying whatever I had to say. And then we finished the first rehearsal. It might have even been you, but somebody turned to me and said, why are you eating so much? <laughs> and I said, well, we're supposed to be having a meal. They said, yeah, but this is a rehearsal. You're going to have to eat that much every time you go through the scene. And somebody said, yeah, what we do is we put the food on our plate and then we pass it and then we get another bowl and then we put the food on our plate and then we pass it. And then we get another bowl and you guys had all scoped out the thing about not cutting and eating too much while you were doing the scenes. And I was clueless. And I was like, oh, I, I can handle it. You know, and I'm a New York actor. I'm not afraid of anything that you California actors are afraid of. And of course, you know, I came very close to needing a bucket 
<laughs> next to me because by the time we were finished filming, I probably had had like two and a half meals and I like had to go back and take a nap in the little dressing room, you know? <laughs> oh yeah. We lived around that kitchen table. So we all, we all learned pretty early <laughs> how to manage the day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then having someone like Will Gear and Ellen Corby around, you know, every time, especially like during Christmas time, when it's a wonderful life comes up and mm -hmm. there's Ellen as a young woman doing that one scene with Jimmy Stewart in the savings and loan or the buildings and loan. And, and she's so innocent mm. and so fresh faced. And I see her in that. And then I'm reminded of her in the Waltons. And you know, it, it, it's, it strikes me once again about, you know, that kind of like the youthful naivete we have as actors because Ellen Corby in that scene, probably not even 25 years old. Right, it was 1947 or so when they made It's a Wonderful Life. Yeah. And she was, that was almost 30 years before you guys did the Waltons, you know? Yeah, and she would have been, because she was, she was only about 50, like not even 60 when we, I think, did the homecoming. I think she was like 58 or 59. She started playing those sort of grandmother roles very early because she didn't get, you know, face work done. And so she just let herself age and had all these wonderful roles. So another case of someone far younger than, you know, what she, I mean, I look at it and I'll go, oh, uh, I'm older than she was when she was playing grandma. Richard and I would joke about, oh yeah, they do another, another reboot of the Waltons. We can be grandma and grandpa. <laughs> you know? right. Take over for, for Will. Yeah. And then Will, you know, had already, he, to see him in the flesh, he'd already been one of those actors that was already indelibly etched in my mind's eye, you know, because I was such a an aficionado of film and of television that I I knew of him, and I also knew of his kind of like political awareness and his connection to progressive movements and things like that, and his story about being blacklisted and all those, you know, things from back in the day as well, you know, and so he held a really really special place for me, you know, so to be to walk into your world, you know, as a young actor from New York, you know, and as soon as I got there, there was even a day, God, I just remember all these things now that we're talking about it. I can't remember, I think it might have been the second show that I did, the second year I was on the show. And I, when I was first in LA, you know, I had these cars that were really bad and I probably bought them for like four or $500 my first year I was out there and they barely worked. And it was always falling apart. And I had I was I had a broken down car. Mm. I was living in uh, Westwood Village at the time when we were filming. And I went to the AD and I was like, "Man, I my car broke down." And I, you know, I'm in Westwood Village. He's like, "Don't worry about it." And he grabbed one of the crew guys. And he said, "Don't you drive through Westwood on your way over to the studio?" And the guy said, "Yeah." And he goes, "Pick up Michael on your way to work tomorrow morning and bring him to the set." And and the guy was like, sure, no problem. And I was like, man, thanks. You know, and like, who knew that could happen? Do you know what I mean? Because you're, I was so kind of out there on my own that every little morsel of like support and connection. I remember coming out of the set the next morning and you guys always had like a big box of Danish mm. donuts by Crafty. And I was like, free food. <laughs> oh, what a concept, you know, like, I don't if it is Danish, you know, all those things when you when we're young and just starting, and you know, I was still way full of dreams and kind of spit and vinegar back then. And that show really, really, you know, it moves me to even just think about it. But it really it gave me so much hope as an actor to know that you know I had gotten the part, and that like you were just saying that you liked my performance in it, and that there was work being generated by, you know, I got the sense that this was, I could create momentum from this and someone might see it and think, oh, you know, he might be an interesting guy to work with. Let's see what, let's see what he could bring to the table. So I, I love going back there and reminiscing uh, about all that stuff. I want to thank Michael for joining me for part one of our conversation. I will be back with more with Michael O'Keefe very soon. Thanks for watching.